St Mark's Square, turned into a lake. This morning in Venice, it's Aqua Alta, flooding caused by an exceptionally high tide in the lagoon, a phenomenon that the locals know well and that they are having to deal with more and more often. There shouldn't be an Aqua Alta at this time of year. Before, the season for Aqua Alta was between October and November, and now, look, we have it at the beginning of the year in January. This didn't happen when I was young, not like this. This is the effect of climate change on Venice. Aqua altas that are more frequent, but also more dramatic, like this one in 2019, when the tide reached 187 centimetres, a level unseen in half a century. Catastrophic flooding that Giovanni remembers well. He has lived in Venice for more than 40 years. That time, the water came up to here. Look, it got everywhere. Here it was like a swimming pool. Ornaments, the fridge, everything ended up in the water and I had to throw it all away. Like Giovanni, thousands of residents lost everything. Today, hardly anyone lives in the street-level homes in the historic centre of Venice that are particularly prone to flooding. All the apartments on the ground floor that are the less expensive homes are empty, abandoned, because low-income families can't afford to buy properties on the upper floors, so people are obliged to move to the mainland. Over the last 70 years, Venice has lost two-thirds of its population. A local pharmacy displays the number. Today, Venice has fewer than 50,000 residents. The Aqua Alta is frequently mentioned in this estate agency because the risk of flooding affects property prices. Apartments on the upper floors cost 30% more than those on the ground floor. It can be humid on the ground floors, but above all, Aqua Alta is the key factor that concerns most clients who want to buy a property in Venice. People ask how long it will last, if it still happens, if the property is at risk or not of flooding flooding that the city is trying to prevent. Once a month, a civil protection team are carrying out checks at this measuring station on the water levels of the lagoon. Here we have a tube that goes to the bottom of the canal. It's perforated so that the water can enter and maintain the same water level, so that it's not affected by variations caused by the waves. The objective, to calibrate the measuring instruments, but also to take note of the recorded data. This figure corresponds to the tidal level measured at this precise moment. This helps us to make predictions for the coming days and to guarantee the navigability of the canals and pedestrian access. Because with a tidal measure of 85 centimetres, the city starts to have viability issues. 18 stations like this one are positioned around the Venetian lagoon. The data collected provides useful information that helps understand the impact of the tides on the Serenissima. This gives us very important information on the evolution of tidal waves, but also on the subsidence of the city. The data is transmitted every five minutes, here to the operational hub of the city's tidal prevention centre. A team of specialists interpret the information concerning wind, atmospheric pressure and water levels in order to make accurate predictions. We've just received the data. Conditions are clearly deteriorating. There's a tide of 115 centimetres the day after tomorrow. With the new meteorological data, the predictions for the tidal levels have worsened by about 10 centimetres. For Venice, that's huge. It's what we're worried about. If nothing changes, in two days at six in the morning, we'll have to activate the Mose system. The Mose system, 78 floating barriers that close the lagoon if there's a high tide of over 110 centimetres. It was activated for the first time in October 2020. Since then, the barriers have been raised 48 times. But for Jane de Mosto, an environmental scientist, this system could threaten the biodiversity of the Venetian lagoon. Right now, there's about a 40 centimetre difference in water level between here and on the seaside of the barriers. We have to be careful about understanding impacts for the, for the water quality and for the ecology of the whole lagoon. 
a report from GIEC, an international group of experts, warns of the possible risk of subsidence in the city due to the rise in sea levels. If nothing changes, the Serenissima could disappear underwater by the end of the century.